Good morning. This morning we hear from St. Mark, Jesus, and the feeding of the 4,000. Not to be confused with his earlier feeding of the 5,000, this is a totally different happening. In our Old Testament lesson, we go all the way back to the beginning, all the way back to the garden, and hear about this garden called Eden that God creates and plants for Adam and Eve. St. Paul, in our epistle, shows us what it is to be a slave to sin versus a slave to God, a, a slave to righteousness. And so if you haven't already, I, I invite you to go and, and read these texts over. They, they are what we will consider this morning. Uh, and also the hymn of the day has been posted so you can, uh, can listen and sing along to that. And so this morning, we have describe to us from St. Mark what at first sounds like a typical regular day with our Lord. A large crowd has gathered around him. But this time, Mark immediately notes that the people who have assembled brought no food with them. They are led out by Jesus. They diligently follow him, listening to what he has to say, and in short, they had a great hunger, and that hunger was for the word of the Lord. In fact, they're so wrapped up in seeing and hearing Jesus that they completely forget about their bodily, physical needs. They were fine sleeping under the stars. Their, their bodies didn't register. They were missing needed substance. And suddenly... After three days, they are way out in the wilderness following Jesus. Mark gives us no real clue that any of them are even aware of what they've done. They, they were laser focused on hearing Jesus. The people didn't realize their plight. But Jesus is keenly aware. He knows exactly what has happened, what is going on, and what will happen if he sends these people away on their own. So he calls his disciples. He says, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way. And some of them have come from far away. The disciples, as is often the case in times like this, are, are at a loss. How can one feed these people with bread here in this desolate place? And so again, the twelve have failed to recognize the power and identity of our Lord, of their Lord. It wasn't a surprise for Jesus to find himself three days into a journey and have no food for the gathering. It isn't a surprise to Jesus that there were seven loaves and a few small fish in their midst. And it wasn't a surprise to Jesus that his disciples had not yet realized the fullness and reality of, of who he is. And so Jesus directs the crowds to sit down. He takes the bread, he prays over it, he breaks it, he distributes it to the many through the hands of his disciples. And they, and he does the same thing with the fish. And so all who are there, man, woman, child, they eat until they are filled. Fragments are gathered and seven baskets full remain. And now, having filled not only their souls, but also their stomachs, now Jesus sends them on their way on to their homes. Our Lord had compassion on these people following him. For three consecutive days, he was giving them what they needed more than anything else in this world. He gave them his word. He knew what they needed to hear. He gave it to them. Not 
only would his words cut their consciences, but he would also bring to them the the healing balm that the word provides, restoring them. St. Matthew's account of this miracle also indicates that Jesus heals many while on this journey. And when he did, the people responded. They glorified the God of Israel. Know that Jesus has the same divine compassion for you and for everyone else in this world as he did in those days in the region of Magadan. Think back to the garden. In divine love, God created the universe and everything in it. He created all the fascinating things on earth to the least, most minute detail. It was perfect and good. He created man in his own image. He completed man by giving him woman. He planted a garden for the man and woman to work and care for a garden that would provide for their physical needs. Everything Adam and Eve would ever need, physical and spiritual, was provided by the Lord God. He even gives them a good and perfect law to follow. Do not eat of that one tree, for if you do, you shall die. But we know the next chapter. We know that they were deceived and ate of that fruit. We know that they died right then and there, even if it would be years, even decades, before the fruit of this death would fully begin to manifest. At that moment, they and all their descendants were made slaves to sin. The fruit we produce as a slave to sin is impurity and lawlessness. It leads to sin's multiplication. We see it not only in the world around us, we also see it in our own constant struggles. But despite our condition, the Lord has divine compassion upon his fallen creation. He knows the spiritual needs of Adam, Eve, and all of mankind. He knows our need for redemption and salvation. He knows we need a peace, a peace that can only be achieved by him. He promises this peace over and over again. The entirety of the Old Testament testifies of this promise. And we see it culminate in the gospel accounts of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It is in Christ Jesus that our spiritual needs are met. It is Jesus who takes on our flesh. It is Jesus who lives under and fulfills perfectly the law. It is Jesus who is condemned and cursed in your place. It is Jesus who dies, is buried, and rises again. Because Of the work of Christ Jesus, you are no longer a slave to sin. In his mercy, he washes you clean. He gives you a new heart and turns you into a slave of God. And while that word slave has an awful connotation today, it is both your reality and for your good. You see, a slave to sin can only sin. Such a slave can only participate in unrighteousness, unlawfulness, and impurity. But through the power and grace of God, he makes you his own. He frees you from your spiritual bondage and places the light and easy yoke of Jesus on your shoulders. Now you desire to be and to do righteousness. You want to produce good fruit. You desire the Holy Spirit's work in you to sanctify you and lead you to eternal life. As we heard from St. Paul 
For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. It is as the slave of God that man finds true freedom. Our God not only knows our needs, both physical and spiritual, but he provides for them. Just as he gives us life and salvation through Jesus and his means of grace, he gives us and sustains our physical life through our daily bread. Through his fatherly work as creator and as sustainer of all things. And like the people who followed Jesus those three days, we continually need to hear this. We need to continually be reminded of God's gospel of peace. This is because though we are redeemed, we are declared righteous, we do want to do good. Nonetheless, we constantly act like that slave to sin. And this is why we gather as a church, as a congregation. This is why you are free to make the sign of the cross remembering your baptism. This is why we approach our Lord's holy altar, receiving the body and blood of our Lord. We need to hear and receive his word continually. For in it is the power of God. In it is God's good gift to you of salvation. And so let us respond as those fed in the wilderness. Let us continually glorify and praise our gracious God and Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose never-failing providence orders all things both in heaven and earth, we humbly implore you to put away from us all hurtful things and to give us those things that are profitable for us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you in this week. Amen.